Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Chi coming to you from the Zanesville Museum of Art. Today we'd like to take you down to Mexico and work with Huichol yarn painting. We have an example here of a design or you can do something with landscape or a bird of nature, um, maybe some lizards, maybe some flowers, anything to do with Ohio, but we'd like you to do it as if you had visited the Huichol natives in Mexico. Also, you can go to YouTube and go on Huichol Yarn Painting at youtube.com to watch some of the actual natives working in this yarn painting. Hi, now let's look and see what it takes for us to actually create our yarn painting. We're going to use this bird as our demo piece. So let's go with what we need for our supplies for this piece. First thing you want to get is yarn. If you have yarn at home, pull out what you have, any colors that you like. Here's three that I have used and like. Then we're going to need some scissors. We're going to need some glue. Now Elmer's glue is a great idea for, uh, to use for this, plus it's washable. I also like to use tacky glue from Aileen. This one sets a little bit faster. I don't know if you have it at home, but it can be used also. And I like to set it down so that it runs towards the tip. So that's how I'll be using it. You'll need a Sharpie marker or some kind of marker and a pencil to transfer your drawings. And you're going to need some ideas. So get your head thinking about some ideas, perhaps in nature, maybe some lizards, some birds, some flowers, anything you see happening outside today in Ohio. So let's get going. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go look for boxes. So the boxes are going to be cut, maybe the flaps. We're going to use um, any size that you want. This one is cut kind of small because it's going to be um, just a short idea. Or you could use the back of a cereal box. That's something to think about that you don't have to go out and buy. Perhaps you have it already at home. All right, let me get this out of here. Nope, we're good. So first, draw your idea. And your idea should be simple with large spaces. Then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your pencil and color along the lines that you see on the back of your drawing. Now I have used tracing paper here. This gets it ready to transfer onto your piece of cardboard. So place it with the pencil on the back, use the front, set it where you want it, and draw heavily with your lines and you'll find that they transfer to the cardboard. Now what is good here is once you have the light pencil lines on there, go over them with the Sharpie marker so that you can see them just as I have done here. Once you have them on your piece of cardboard, you're ready to apply your yarn. So get your yarn set now you can cut small pieces. For the leaves, I like to cut pieces that I know will fit in there, so I go ahead and cut several pieces. And then we're going to get the glue out. There we go. You're going to take your Elmer's glue, open it up, and you're going to put it inside your leaves. We're then going to lay the yarns down and keep on placing them there until we get it all filled in. 
And if they stick out, don't worry about them. Just cut them to size. Some people like to do their leaves all one color. I enjoy doing my leaves in two colors. Let those dry and uh, go on to another piece. If you want to use the tacky glue, okay, that's a tough one. Go ahead and put it down. Where are you going to need it? Now I have the yarn started. Remember I told you about laying your glue bottle down so that you don't have to wait for it to get to the opening. Take your yarn. Now, when you are working this, it can get kind of crazy. So take your yarn, cut off a length of it, bundle it up, and it'll be easier for you to use. You don't want to be dragging a big ball of yarn around. So go ahead and place it in there. And your fingers are going to get a little messy, but it all works out. And this is nice washable glue. You will see it as you are working with it, but you won't see it once it is dry. So don't worry about it if you do have it there. Okay, trim it and keep going. Now in this piece, I have done uh, different shades of black and gray for the bird and the robin has his rust colored breast and then we put sky colored yarn and um, if you look on the videos you'll see that they have black outlines on many of their pieces I took raffia and put it in the bird's mouth as if this bird is already building the nest which is what I like to see, some action going on there. It's really kind of nice. You can then take your yarn, tape it on the back for a hanger. And you can put that right up as soon as you are done. I think it would be a good idea to let it dry though, don't you? Sometimes we don't like to do pictures of animals and we just feel like doing a design. Now a design might be a better piece for someone whose fingers are not easily manipulated or you perhaps you just don't know what you want to do. So a fun design would also work. Hearts, circles. In this piece I have edges that are loopy and I have edges that are dragging off. This is an easy way to lay things and not worry about how to uh, deal with those edges until the very end. All you have to do is take your scissors and trim the edges. So you can have nice even edges or you can have loopy edges. It's how you would like to do it. So think again about visiting Mexico and watching the Weechall yarn painting videos on YouTube. This is Mrs. G from Zanesville Museum of Art, hoping you're going to have a great time with your yarn paintings.